Hi guys, and welcome to another episode of Kitten Explains It All. In this episode, we're going to be discussing fracking and the Barnton Moss Project Camp. So let's start and actually look at what fracking actually is. So in a nutshell, you effectively drill down 8,000 feet into something called shale, which is effectively a mix of mud and minerals. Once the well has reached the shale, then water is pumped down at high pressure into the rock which releases gas. That gas is then collected and sold. There is a few problems with fracking. The extensive use of fracking in the US has revolutionised the energy industry there, though it has prompted many environmental concerns. The first one of these that we're going to look at is that fracking uses huge amounts of water that must be transported to the fracking site at huge environmental costs. The second worry is potentially carcinogenic chemicals used may escape and contaminate groundwater around the fracking site. The third risk to fracking is that multiple wells must be dug, all of which pass through drinking water aquifers, which can be found just a thousand feet below the ground. Poorly maintained or drilled wells have been found to leak fracking fluid or even natural gases into our drinking water. The industry claims that pollution incidents are actually a result of bad practice rather than an inherently risky techniques. There's also been some proven cases that the fracking process can cause small earth tremors or earthquakes. Two small earthquakes, one at 1.5 and the other at 2.2 magnitude, hit the Black Pill area after fracking begun. Professor Ernie Rutter of the University of Manchester said, it's always a recognised potential hazard in fracking. Yes, Professor, that's fantastic. Earthquakes are something that we really, really should just accept. Finally, environmental campaigners say that fracking is simply distracting energy firms and the government from investing in renewable energy sources which is encouraging the continued reliance on fossil fuels. Let's be honest here. Do, they, do we trust these energy companies to be morally and ethically sound? Will their main focus be on ensuring that all possibilities of environmental damage are minimised? That wells are maintained and above all there should be zero risk to wildlife and the local population? And they will not use legal loopholes in the law illegal dumping, etc., just to maximise profits and then deny any wrongdoing? How safe is the actual fracking fluid itself? Is fracking fluid a brew of toxic, dangerous chemicals? No, it's perfectly safe, says some CEOs of fracking companies. The best thing is some of these snake oil salesmen carry tiny little vials of the liquid and say it's perfectly safe to drink and then drink it. Has anyone else seen a magic trick before? So it seems that the industry can pick from 600 different fracking chemicals. So we thought we'd give you a list of all the 600 different chemicals that the CEOs say are safe to drink. So yes, that's a list of the chemicals that are used in fracking. So fracking uses up millions of gallons of fresh drinking water, our drinking water, and then the water that's used has to be pumped back up the well, and that water's considered toxic. It's not safe to drink, it's not safe to use, and that water then has to be stored somewhere. A lot of that water down that well leaches into the groundwater, the aquifers, our drinking water, the water that wildlife drinks as well, and apparently that's okay. Yes, there are those that say this will fix all their energy problems, but we're still burning fossil fuels, we're still using gas. That methane gas is released into the atmosphere at much higher quantities than we normally do. It's not a better renewable source of energy, it still pollutes. We should be moving away from things like that, not killing its progress. So now we're going to move on to the Barnton Most protest camp, which is in Greater Manchester in Salford. 
So for the last couple of weeks, I've been doing my research into this and watching a lot of YouTube videos and stuff. So I thought I'd share some of the highlights and some of the information I've dug up about this. I spent countless hours trying to give a balanced portrayal of fracking, looking into as much information and learning as much as I can. And here's what I've come to the conclusion about fracking. This is to those who say fracking is safe. I'm sorry, but anyone who says fracking is safe is misinformed and dangerous because you're promoting something that's actually going to pollute our drinking water. It's been proven time after time that this stuff happens. And just wait till you see how the police have been handling people who are protesting about wanting to make sure their drinking water is safe for them, their kids and the wildlife. It's interesting. Every single person that has really spoken about fracking being safe always seems to have one thing in common, a conflict of interest. For example, let's talk about Salford City Council. Salford City Council said that fracking was perfectly safe and gave the planning permission go ahead to the Barnton Moss aka iGas, which is the company that's drilling there. Interestingly enough, Salford City Council's pension scheme owns shares in iGas. The interesting thing is, if you look at the people who are actually protesting this, they're not making any money. They don't own shares in anything. They're not doing anything that has a conflict of interest. They're really just saying they were afraid that their water might get contaminated and they're trying to stop that. So I decided to use Barnton Moss because it's probably one of the most publicized things in the UK. Now let's talk about Greater Manchester Police. The police division in charge of like managing the protest. Now, they have really, really been using underhanded tactics and quite a lot of dirty manoeuvres to try and make it much harder for the protesters to protest and facilitating eye gas to be able to get on with drilling their well. One of the examples of this was the footpath issue. Now, originally, Man Greater Manchester Police said that this was a highway. Now, in the United Kingdom, a highway, there's such a thing as called obstructing the highway. It's a, it's a law, the police can charge you for it if you obstruct it. Now, because uh, the police were charging people with obstruction of the highway, basically, protesters were blocking trucks that were coming in and they were walking at a certain place that the police agreed was like two miles an hour. Now, originally, at the beginning of these protests, Greater Manchester Police were arresting people um, for obstruction of the highway, in other words, blocking the trucks that were coming in. Now, the protesters were walking at a pace being pushed by the police, which you can see in this video here, and they were being pushed along at a, at a gradual pace of two miles an hour, which apparently was agreed to by the protesters and the police. Now, the problem with this was the police were arresting people for not going fast enough. In other words, if they were going too slow or slower than two miles an hour or their agreed speed limit for that day, then the police were basically surrounding them, grabbing them and pulling them off into, into a big group of police who would then arrest them for obstruction of the highway. It turned out that the police had actually arrested these people for obstruction of the highway. Um, but what Greater Manchester Police had been doing is they'd came along earlier and cut down the public footpath signs. Here's a photograph of this happening. Now, they'd cut them actually down and bundled them into the back of the van, so it turns out that the Barnton Moss Road that the protesters were trying to block the trucks on isn't actually a highway, it's not part of, um, it's not part of the highways, it's a private road, which means, but it also has right of way public access. So it's a public footpath. So that turns out that instead of obstruction of the highway, it would be aggravated trespass. Now, that might not mean a big deal to most people, but when you look at how the difference between um, aggravated trespass and obstruction of the highway, one of the big major differences is that obstruction of the highway, you can't get legal aid for. So let's talk about Greater Manchester Police's, well, honesty, you know. Now, this is somebody uh, who's what they call a legal observer, which is basically somebody who's a member of the press or a member of, not doesn't have to be a social press, who's filming. And this is what happened when he got in the way of the police. Get over there. You're part of that group. You're assaulting me, please. I'm not assaulting you. I'm moving you and I'm helping you into that line 
I could arrest you, but I'm not going to arrest you. So it's in your benefit. Are you drunk? You've been drinking this morning. You've been drinking this morning. No, I have not. You've been drinking this morning. No, I've not. You've been drinking. I've had tea. You've arrived in your car. No, I've not. You've arrived in your car this morning. You've had a drink, haven't you? You've had a drink this morning. Where's your car? Been drinking this morning. No, I've not. You just said to me you've had two drinks. No, I've not. You just said that you've had two drinks. I've got it on camera. Yeah, you just said to me you've had two drinks. No, I can I've smell not. alcohol in your breath and you've come in a car. No, when I've did not. you have your drinks this morning? Uh, what well, am I being arrested, officer? No, I'm making inquiries, Steve, so you're unfit. Hey, Stephen, will you listen to me? Listen to me. Just get the uh not going anywhere. You've been detained this moment in time. Have you got uh, this lad that's coming in the car this morning? I've smiled on his breath, he's already admitted to having a drink. No. Um, I've got it on so film. Yeah, I've not had a drink fine. at all. I've had tea this so morning, officer. We've got two, two officers. Uh... Brilliant. Apparently, pedestrians can now be drive, done for drink driving. And just the way he kind of suggested that suddenly he was drinking, yeah. Now let's go on to look at Greater Manchester's police handling of an 82 year old lady with walking sticks who was removed from the protest for walking too slowly. Yes, that's right, an 82 year old woman with walking sticks was walking too slowly for Greater Manchester Police. But it gets better. Greater Manchester Police then brought in social services, child protective services, and threatens to remove a woman's children because she brought them to a protest. The police detained the woman so that social services could threaten the woman with the loss of her children if she continued to attend the protests. In another incident, the police decide to snatch an 11 year old girl from her parents who is peacefully protesting and they forcibly remove her. A bunch of massive men grab an 11 year old girl and refuse to let her go or let her go back to her parents. Then the police attack a 15 year old girl for walking too slowly. And another incident, Manchester, Greater Manchester Police picked up a disabled man and threw him into the bushes, breaking his leg. So you have to ask yourself, why is the local government, Salford City Council, allowing this? Well, I think we know from previously because they're getting a nice little pension scheme. Good one, guys. Well done. I hope you have a, you know, a lovely retirement on you know, the deaths and illnesses of people whose water gets contaminated. But, you know, don't worry about that, guys, so long as your pension scheme's okay. What happened to being able to be allowed to peacefully protest and stop things? Apparently, Greater Manchester Police feel it's in their benefit to arrest people, bully them, threat to take away their kids, break their legs, grab 82-year-old women, you know, accost and, as far as I'm concerned, frighten 11 year old and 15 year old girls all because well apparently i gas is afraid of them it's interesting because if you look at fracking france has banned it germany's banned it ireland's banned it the czech government is seriously consider it washington dc has already banned it the province of nova scotia and canada is in the middle of banning it that's the same people that are allowing the tar sands to go on that's how dangerous they're seeing it uh, so why all of a sudden is the u is okay in the uk to frack What's the advantage of fracking? In all honesty, I can see none for except for those who stand to make a profit from it. In truth, the, ga the more gas that's sold in the world anyway, our oil prices will go up because we're using less oil, so thus we'll be charged more for it. So fracking in a nutshell seems to be, it's very fucking dangerous. It's probably gonna pollute our groundwater. It's probably gonna kill our wildlife. We're probably gonna have gas into our pipes and stuff but that's safe so long as iGas and all these other companies make profit. I don't really see how that's fair. I don't really see how that's a good thing. I don't see how that's progress. I don't see how that's anything but a complete clusterfuck and a profit making by these energy giants again. It's time we say no to this stuff. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed Kitting Explains It All. Remember to subscribe below and remember to like or dislike, you know, it doesn't matter. But, you know, and feel free to make your comments. I hope you enjoyed today's show. Thanks very much for watching.